electrically evoked stapedial reflex threshold, often referred to as ESRT, is an objective approach to setting upper loudness levels in cochlear implants. Studies have shown a strong correlation between ESRT and upper stimulation levels. Additionally, patients programmed with ESRT will often report equal loudness between these upper stimulation levels. Having balanced loudness levels across the electrode array has been shown to provide the patient with higher perceived sound quality and better speech recognition performance when compared to subjective loudness tasks. The equipment needed to successfully obtain ESRT measurements are 1. An impedance bridge with the ability to measure reflex decay, 2. The patient's processor, and 3. The advanced bionics fitting software. For the purpose of this demonstration, a GSI TimpStar Pro is being used. How to accurately measure ESRT. Step 1. Invite the patient to sit in a comfortable position and instruct them to sit as still as possible. For some patients, it can be helpful to provide them with an activity such as watching a movie or reading a book. Step 2. Once they are comfortable, perform otoscopy. Step 3. Evaluate their middle ear status with tympanometry. It is important to note that ESRT cannot be measured if the patient has a type B tympanogram. Additionally, responses may be more difficult to observe if they have a type C or type A sub S. Step 4. Continue by selecting the reflex decay mode and set the probe tone to 678 or 1000 Hz. Step 5. In the advanced bionic software, select either tone burst or speech burst, keeping in mind that the speech burst will result in lower responses that will be closer to the user M level, whereas the tone burst response will provide greater detail about the shape of the map. Now in your software, make sure that you have the M level selected on the first electrode you would like to measure. Step 6. Once you are ready to begin, start the reflex decay and wait a second or two to see the baseline. Then, with the reflex decay still running, present three to four stimulations at the patient's currently worn M level, making sure to allow enough time in the frame to see the onset and offset of a response. It is useful to have the computer audio on to assist you in observing responses. If a response is observed on the first presentation, decrease your M level and present again. Continue to decrease M level until a response is not observed. Once a response is no longer observed, increase the M level until a response is once again observed. Here's an example of a response being observed on the first presentation. The clinician decreasing the M level and presenting again. Once a response is observed, the M level is increased until the response is observed again. If a response is not observed on the first presentation, increase your M level and present again. Continue to increase your M level until a response is observed. Here is an example of when no response is observed on the first presentation and the clinician increasing the M level and presenting again. The M level is increased until a response is observed.
Step 7. Once you have observed a response on the electrode, move to the next test electrode. Repeat the process until you have obtained ESRT on at least half of the electrodes if you are using tone burst, or all groups if using speech bursts. The following are some video examples of what you may see in your own clinic. Here's an example of a visualized response. Notice that when the stimulus is presented, the tracing changes in synchrony with the stimulus, indicating an ESRT response. Here's an example of how a patient's movement can interfere with the tracing. Notice that at the end of the movement, the response is still visible. Some additional things to keep in mind when measuring ESRT in your patients. Do not increase the M level beyond the patient's comfort level. If you have a poor seal or fit with the impedance probe, change it. A poor fit can present as a rise in your tracing. If you are having a difficult time observing responses, try measuring it from the other ear. In summary, programs set with ESRT provide the patient with higher perceived sound quality and better speech recognition performance when compared to subjective loudness tasks. Keep in mind that measuring with speech bursts will result in lower responses that will be closer to the user M level, whereas the tone burst response will provide greater detail about the shape of the map. Don't forget to set your probe tone to 678 or 1000 Hz. Be prepared for a variation of ESRT responses. Practice makes observing responses easier. Thank you for watching.